All right, welcome back to chapter 10. We are in section 3. It's still talking about circles, and this time we are just going to talk about the arcs and chords. So remember, chords are have endpoints at the sides of the circle. So theorem 10.1 says, in the same circle or congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So if your chords are congruent, so if FG is congruent to JH, then I know that their chords are congruent. So cool, um, I mean arcs are congruent. FG arc is congruent to arc JH, and that can go both ways. If their arcs are congruent, then their chords are congruent. All right. So. Um, in jewelry, a center piece of jade is hung from a chain by two wires around the stone. If JM is congruent to KL, and I also know that arc KL, remember the arc is the exterior part, is 90 degrees. We want to find what is JM. Well, because they're chords, are congruent. I know that their corresponding arcs are congruent. So the measure of KL arc is going to be equal to the measure of JM's arc. So I know the measure of JM is going to be 90 degrees. All right, go ahead and stop this video. Do your checkpoint really fast. Here is the correct answer. All right, let's try another one. In our figure, we know that circle A and circle B are congruent. That means their radii are congruent. So both their radii might be 5 centimeters or 2 centimeters or however much. I know that arc WX, so notice their tick mark, still means congruent on an arc, is congruent to YZ's arc. And I want to find... Um, Wx, so that means it's chord. Well, because I know that the arcs are congruent, so are the chords, the corresponding chords that are congruent. So I know that Wx is congruent to Yz. So I know that this is congruent to that. So because they're congruent, I can say 7x minus 2 equals 5x plus 6. I can start solving for x, adding 2 to both sides, subtracting 5 from both sides. So those cancel. So I have 2x is equal to 8, so I know x equals 4. Well, it does ask for wx, so wx equals 7x minus 2. So I'm going to plug that answer 7 times 4 minus 2, so Wx is 26 units, which would also make Yz 26 units. All right, try that last, that next checkpoint. Here is your answer. All right, to the next page. We have two theorems that have a little bit of information, so let's look at those. If a diameter or a radius of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. So I have a diameter here. If it is perpendicular to our chord x, y, then I know two things. I know the first thing, that it bisects the chord. So x, z would be congruent to y, z. And I also know it bisects the arc, so um, arc XB will be congruent to arc YB. Alright, so here's a couple things of information that we can remember from that. So if a radius or the diameter, so I could have just said um, diameter CB is perpendicular to a chord. We know that the chord 
becomes two congruent parts. And we know the arc becomes two congruent parts. So um, we can say, again, XZ is congruent to YZ. Those are our chords split in half. And our arcs are also cut in half as well. All right. Theorem 10.4 says, The perpendicular bisector of a chord is a diameter of or a radius of a circle. So if I can see that I have a chord and it is bisected, perpendicular bisected, then I can tell you that AB is the diameter. Alright, so what do I need to look for? I need two chords that are perpendicular, so since I know that AB is perpendicular to XY, I know that one chord is bis and I know one chord is bisected, then the other chord, AB, would be my diameter. So I, the second chord, not the chord that's bisected, but the other one is going to be the diameter. So you're finding the diameter. All right, let's look at our example. In circle G, I know that D, E, F, so arc D, E, F, so this arc right here is 150 degrees. I want to find arc DE, so just this part right here. Alright, so I know or I see that EG is a radius and is perpendicular to um, DF. With that information, because of our theorem that we just said, I know that um, EG bisects our arc DEF. So I can say that arc DE, so this arc, is congruent to EF. Well, because I know that DE arc plus EF arc makes up um, E or D EF, I can divide 150 degrees by 2. So 150 divided by 2, because it's bisected, I know that that's congruent to that. So I know that um, we have a 75 degree arc. What else do we know because of this? Okay, so we know that DH also has to be congruent to FH. So FH would be 5 degrees. That's something else we could know. Alright, go ahead and stop this video and try your checkpoint. Your answer is B. Alright. A real world example. In a ceramic stepping stone below, the diameter AB is 18 inches long. So A, B is 18 inches. That is our diameter. And chord EF is um, 8 inches long. I want to find C, D. C to D. So I'm trying to find from the center to that chord. So we need to draw our radius CE. Alright. 
And what we have just done is it forms a right triangle. <coughs> you notice over here, I know that if I draw this as a radius, which is also congruent to that whole part, which is a radius, which is congruent to there. So I'm only drawing one radius because if I connect um, E, D, C, I know that that makes a right triangle. So I need to find, if I can find CE, I can also find um, any other radius. So what do we know? We know that because I have a chord that is perpendicular to the radius, I know that this is congruent to that. So um, I know that DE is congruent to DF. And because the whole length is 8, I know that um, DE is 4. Okay, so I know that. I'm just redrawing this triangle down here to make it a little easier. All right, what else do I know? Um, I know that the entire diameter is 18 which makes if a diameter is 18, then my radius is going to equal 9, because it's half of. So any radius CE, CF, CB is going to be 9, so I have 9 here. So because I know how to solve a right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say 9 squared equals... 4 squared plus CD squared. So 81 equals 16 plus CD squared. Subtract 16 from both sides. So CD squared is going to equal 65. So if I take the square root, because I use the Pythagorean theorem, I know that CB is the square root of 65, or about 8.06 inches. Alright, go ahead and stop this video and try your next checkpoint using the Pythagorean Theorem. Here is your answer. And last thing for this section, in the same circle or in congruent circles, Two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. So remember, that's perpendicular and congruent. So if XL is congruent to LY, I also know, and they're perpendicular, of course then I can say that FG is congruent to JH, which also in terms means my arcs are congruent to each other as well. So we can say our chords are equal and perpendicular to the center then my chords are congruent. <coughs> Excuse me. Alrighty, so in our circle P, EF and GH are equal, and they both equal 24. We want to find PQ, or P. Alright, well since our chords are equal, we also know they are equidistant from the center if they are perpendicular. So I know that PQ is equal to PR. So I can say 4x minus 3 equals 2x plus 3. My x becomes 3, so when I plug it into PQ, I know that 4 times 3 minus 3 equals 9 units. 